Hello AAAI 2023, my name is Gustav and this is Beyond Graph Neural Networks with Lifted Relational Neural Networks, which is this learning framework that we've been working on for the past 10 years now. And we also like to call it Neurologic for short, as it combines neural networks with relational logic. And the idea of this talk is to show you that it is more expressive, more powerful and sometimes even faster than classic graph neural networks frameworks and so that you might want to consider using this instead, especially if you've been thinking about extending the capabilities of graph neural nets or combining them with some form of logic or reasoning. So starting very generally, this framework lies in the realm of neural symbolic integration for combining the benefits of symbolic and statistical AI approaches, particularly the discrete representations from symbolic AI, which are commonly data efficient, interpretable, they allow for systematic generalization and are commonly applied in various AI tasks as reasoning or planning, etc. And then on the other hand, we have the continuous representation from the statistical or neural approaches, which are typically computationally efficient, and they are able to handle uncertainty and noise. And these are being used in pretty much all of machine learning these days. Now let us take a bit closer look at what we are actually integrating. So on one hand, we have this concept of deep learning, which probably needs no introduction. It is this machine learning paradigm where we use gradient descent to train parameters of nested functions, which can be conveniently represented by their computational graphs, commonly referred to as neural networks. And the main idea here is in learning of latent representations, which are commonly viewed through the hidden layers in these networks. And now the main limitation of classic deep learning that we address here is the form of these representations, which, similarly to the input data themselves, is typically constrained to the form of fixed size numeric tensors. On the other side of the machine learning spectrum, there is this rather unorthodox community of relational learning, also called inductive logic programming, which uses the language of first order or relational logic to capture richly structured data in various forms of annotated graphs, hypergraphs, databases, ontologies, and so on, as well as the complex learning patterns and models extracted from these. And now the inference with these models can also be conveniently visualized in the form of computational graphs, commonly referred to as proof trees or resolution trees. Now the research question is how do we combine these two paradigms to make neural networks learn with these rich relational representations, or from the other perspective, how to use gradient descent for inductive logic programming. Now, to put this idea into some context of related work, this concept is not exactly new, particularly if you're inspired by so-called lifted graphical models known from statistical relational learning, which use the language of relational logic clauses extended with numeric parameters to serve as templates for defining standard, also called ground, graphical models such as in this super popular example of a Markov logic network about smokers being unfolded into a standard Markov network. Now, the interesting thing about uh, this ground network are the shared weights and generally the symmetries uh, induced by the use of the logical template. So with that, we move to the framework itself, which uses this lifting idea to facilitate relational learning in neural networks instead of graphical models. So syntactically, uh, somewhat similarly to the Markov logic networks, a lifted relational neural network is a set of weighted definite clauses. And these are commonly written in the form of implication rules in the context of logic programming, which we follow quite closely. And similarly to classic inductive logic programming, the learning examples are also expressed in the weighted logic, most commonly as sets of weighted facts. And then instead of inputting an example into a model, as we know from classic machine learning, we just merge these two representations together and interpret the result as a neural network. And the semantics of this process is as follows. We compute the least Herbram model of this resulting set to obtain all valid groundings of all the rules in the template. And then we map this ground logical model into a neural model composed of these four types of neurons or nodes, which will be demonstrated shortly. And then we can just use gradient descent to optimize the parameters originally associated with the rules. Now, instead of going deeper into the theory behind the framework, which you can find in the paper, I will just demonstrate it on a series of simple and commonly known examples of neural architectures. So let's start with the simplest concept, which is the standard feedforward neural nets modeling. 
Now, exploring correspondences between feedforward neural and propositional logic programs has been done a lot in the 90s already. You might have heard about models such as the knowledge-based artificial neural networks, which is basically just about assigning names to the individual neurons in the network corresponding to the logical atoms from the template, such as the propositions of dark, cold, sunny, and hot here, corresponding to the fact nodes in the network, respectively. And then there are rule nodes uh, capturing respective conjunctions between these, commonly under some smooth fuzzy logic interpretation to be differentiable, and then these form input into so-called atom nodes, again corresponding to logical atoms from the template, such as the forecast proposition here. Now this, these are associated with logical disjunction for combining the different rules together. And then finally, uh, the weights from the rules are directly mapped to the corresponding connections in the network, similarly to the Markov logic networks. Now, the thing with feedforward neural networks, or MLPs for short, is that these are inherently propositional. And so there's a one to one structural correspondence between these models and the computation of propositional fuzzy logic templates. So if you just skip the neuron labeling, the particular fuzzy logic interpretation, and combine the scalar weights into matrices, then all MLPs can be modeled as these simpler linear chains of rules starting from the input features and going all the way through the hidden concepts to the final output query. So from the structural point of view, we're not really getting anything new by encoding classic MLPs with propositional logic templates. You can just perform the exact same computation in any classic framework like PyTorch or TensorFlow. Now with the relational logic templates that may contain logical variables in them, things get much more interesting as we can get to more advanced neural architectures. So for instance, here is an encoding of a standard convolutional neural network, or CNN for short, simplified to one dimension for visual clarity, the core of which can be encoded by the simple rule on top, which expresses the relational pattern that each three objects, A, B, and C, that are consecutive in some sense, should be jointly parameterized and aggregated into a latent representation concept called H. Now this rule, when grounded over some sequential structure, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here, then directly corresponds to the computation induced via application of a standard convolutional filter in CNNs, where we have the input pixel values corresponding to the fact nodes. The rule nodes then represent the individual application of the convolutional filters. And finally, we have the aggregation node capturing the pooling operation. Now, this example might seem a little bit cumbersome as there are inherent assumptions about the structure of the pixel grids that are inherent in the CNNs, while here we have to make them explicit. But the principles come more naturally, for instance, for various recurrent and recursive neural models, which can be represented very elegantly, since there are fewer assumptions here, and recursion is obviously a very natural concept in logic programming, so recursive unfolding of weighted templates over recursive data structures, such as various sequences or trees corresponding to the recurrent and recursive networks, respectively, is very elegant and powerful in the framework. And this correspondence becomes even more natural for the graph neural networks, which have recently become extremely popular in deep learning for graph structured data. So in logical terms, the idea behind graph neural networks is that the hidden representation of some node V in the layer I is determined by some parameterized transformation of some other node U such that there is an edge between V and U. And further, in some more advanced GNN models, you might also want to combine this with the representation of the same node V from the previous layer. And now this logical template, basically directly encoding the weiss file lehmann based propagation rule, also called message passing in GNNs, will automatically induce the exact same computation graph you would get with those classic GNNs when written procedurally in the classic deep learning frameworks. Now, please note that these two rules are not some abstract mathematical notation, as commonly used for presentation of the GNNs in the papers, but they are the actual code that can be directly run which we found quite neat in contrast to the procedural programming in common deep learning frameworks, where the procedural encoding is quite different from the abstract mathematical notation used in the papers. So that was how simply you can capture the GNN principles in the logical framework, and with that we move to the performance.
So in the paper, we demonstrated that while this declarative framework is more expressive than the standard procedural frameworks, allowing for encoding of much more complex models than the GNNs, it does not suffer from computational inefficiencies for these basic models either, as some might expect. On the contrary, we compared against the most popular GNN frameworks of Python Geometric and Deep Graph Library over a set of standard GNN models, particularly graph convolutional networks, graph SASH, and graph isomorphism networks, and some standard benchmarks for learning with molecular data, and showed that we are commonly an order of magnitude faster than the second fastest framework of Python Geometric, which was quite surprising to many people. And this holds as long as we do not increase the tensor parameterization and batching to the extremes where the standard weight matrix multiplication takes over basically all of the computation. And that's because we currently simply do not utilize any acceleration for large matrix operations. And there are multiple reasons behind this favorable performance of the framework, but maybe the primary one is this lossless model compression of structured convolutional models via lifting, as we call it in a recent ICLR paper. And the point here is that if you apply simple computation schemes, such as the GN and message passing, to input structures that exhibit some sort of symmetries, then the induced computational graphs will contain these symmetries too. So as shown here in the picture, the molecule of methane is highly symmetric through this, it has a central reflection point through the carbon atom. And so the computational graph will necessarily share this symmetry through the central carbon atom and all its latent representations too. So this means that if we can detect these symmetries and uh, we can effectively compress all these equivalents of computations into a single instance, which will then be mm, carried out only once and broadcasted into respective places in the computational graph. So this leads to a functionally equivalent, yet typically much smaller computational graph as shown here in the bottom. So that was improving performance of the gene and models, but it's really just a side story because the main part is the increased expressiveness the framework allows. Because while you can encode any GNN model in the framework, it is by no means limited or even optimized for this existing model class. It is thanks to the underlying relational logic formalism, which is highly expressive, you can do much more than just climbing edges in a graph, which is what the GNNs do. This means that nothing stops you from playing uh, with what we like to call deep relational learning ideas, uh, such as playing with various heterogeneous or multi-relational graphs, uh, alternative representation of what the edge concept means, uh, playing directly with hypergraphs and relational databases. Actually, you can run GNN-like models directly in database engines uh, and with this framework. Uh, play with various subgraph, metapath, and metagraph GNNs that have recently been explored by various researchers. Uh, define completely new message passing schemes you know, beyond the standard weissfar lehmann incorporate differentiable pattern matching, um, background domain knowledge if we have some, and so on. And while there is no time to dive into this here, you can find some examples of these concepts in the paper, as well as on the GitHub page of the framework. So here's just one simple example of what we can do beyond the classic message passing that improves the basic gene and performance in molecular data sets. And that is generalizing the propagation scheme to operate on the level of atom rings instead of just nodes and edges as done in classic GNNs. And again, this is easy to do. You encode a ring as just a conjunctive pattern composed of the individual edges or bones in the molecules. You add some learnable parameters uh, while aggregating the representations of the contained atoms into the rings, and then you propagate the representation from the ring back into the individual atoms. And we did find this concept to improve uh, models, basic gene and models while learning with the molecules a little bit. So that was the increased expressiveness that the framework provides. And with that, we can conclude what we did here. So we reintroduced the old lifted relational neural networks framework as a differentiable logic programming language for integrating relational logic inference and modern deep learning architectures. We demonstrated that it's competent with respect to modern deep learning frameworks, particularly in the GNN domain, and we outlined different ways for extrapolation beyond the current state of art in the GNN domain, which is stemming from the inherent relational logic expressiveness of the framework. So with that, I sincerely uh, encourage you to check out the framework. It's called Neurologic. You can find it on GitHub, either the backend or the Python front end. And we hope that you will find it useful in designing of your own novel deep relational learning ideas beyond the DNNs.